Hello everybody, this is Michael from Master Jerry Gaming, and welcome to another, well, to a new series. Um, this is Stonehearth. Stonehearth is a pretty cool game. It's still in alpha, as you can see right there. But it is a really cool game. Um, I love playing it. This is my friend's game. Um, I have several. I have a, basically like the creative mode. Um... This is my first attempt, it failed. Second attempt at survival, it failed. This is my... Uh... Actually, wait, no. So, I obviously made it much farther on New Haven City. On, on this one. Than on... Normal one. I didn't make it very far with that one. Um... Basically, this one right here... This is my creative one where there's no enemies or anything. So it's pretty easy going on there. But we are going to be starting a series on this. Hopefully, if you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to get right into it. This is It's a game about building and surviving. So there's two different sets of people you can play as. You can play as the Senesi or Raya's children. Uh, whoops. Um... The Ascendancy are earnest and hardworking, loyal and well-rounded citizens of the Ascendancy, chop, build, and farm, confident in the known world is theirs to inhabit. Right as children, the people of the desert learned early that to survive, they needed, to, they needed each other, and probably as many others as they could reach. Now visitors find them generous hosts from, with access to goods from all over the world. So these are more trading based, these are more they can do stuff on their own. So we're going to be going into the Ascendancy. Uh, so a prosperous and industrious kingdom. Uh, you can click on it and change it again. But right here. Seeking new lands and adventures to set off to the temperate biome or the desert biome. They're planning on make, adding in more biomes to this game. Uh, temperate biome is obviously forests, rivers, and mountains. It's the default home of the Ascendancy. Best place for them. Dry and sandy with chunky hills and sparse vegetation. Default home of the Rias children is the desert. Um, since it's the default home and it's much easier to survive in the temperate biome, we're going to be going with the temp temperate biome. Every time I've tried doing desert, I don't even have time to save. It, I die almost instantly. Um, so we're going to be doing... We're going to Darkmoor Forest. Uh, we're not going to be doing peaceful. We're going to be doing normal... So, a sandbox mode where you're free to build your town without worrying about invaders whatsoever. You can still lose. Um, your people can die of hunger or exhaustion. Uh, normal, you have monsters to deal with. And hard has even more monsters than normal. So, a brave band of settlers from the Ascendancy, a prosperous and industrious kingdom. Seeking new lands and adventure, they set off to Darkmoor Forest, a location that is sure to be an inspiring place to start anew. So, if I choose this, it says a tranquil place and a daunting place. So, an inspiring place to start anew. This is our story. Um, so, you can get the different citizens. Holy crap! I got some good ones. 656, 45, uh, not one, not really. 65, 6 on there. So, he'd be good for a uh, cleric. Um, five, six, six, five, six, four. Holy crap. I don't think I've ever had a band of citizens that is this good. You can roll new citizens, uh, that have different stats and have different names. You can't change their names, and I don't know why it looks like... Oh, you can change their names. Oh, okay, let's name these guys. So, we're going to have, um... Hmm. <sighs> Let's name them. <laughs> I say, yeah, I have no idea what to name them. Um. Let's name this one Petunia, I guess. Um, I, I didn't know you could name them before. Like, you weren't able to before. Uh, that must be new update. Uh, we're gonna name him... Log... This shall be Fred. This is George. <laughs> if 
any of you remember watching Regrowth before uh, I deleted it, because it was discontinued and never going to be doing, and it also was pretty bad. Um, there was Fred and George that we named two Endermites. Um, this is going to be Chops, because look at the... Look at those chops. Look at them. Um, this is going to be Sarah. And this is going to be... Um, look, we gotta have a weird, like a really weird name. Um, how about y Uretha? Uretha, there we go. So, Trapper's Knife is always good to have, but it ca takes all of our gold. Um, so I'm not going to be doing that. Farmer's Hill Wooden Sword, and then we're going to buy all of this stuff so we can start getting people early on. So, now we get to choose our map, uh, where basically where we're going to live. This isn't that good of one. You usually want a place to settle that's pretty well defended. I mean, right here is okay. But that's not enough space to build a town. So we're going to roll a new map. Right here you can see the seeds. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I don't think so. It'd be a cool place to build, but... Not very plausible. Right here could be good. Hmm. Or right there. You can put in world seeds right here. And if you guys want to play in the same map as me, if you have this game, mm, there's the seed. Uh, not going to go with this one, though. Uh, I'll do... Hmm. There's really not that many good ones. Finding a good map on this game is so hard. I got the same exact, well, almost the same exact map again. Ugh. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do one more. One more, and hopefully this one has a really good place. Um. Not anywhere really good, but right here seems okay. So we're gonna just do that. It doesn't really matter where we settle. We should be able to get resources everywhere. I know it's not that easily defended. Actually, yeah, that's a pretty bad spot. Ooh, this could be nice. You want usually want a big body of water so you can put farms all the way around it. I say we settle right here. Because we have the water at our backs. And we can just build a wall around us. So we're going to... Uh, I'm going to move it forward just a little bit right there. The map is actually a lot smaller than it looks. So... Here we go, we're loading up our world. And yeah, let's just So let's see. What do we got? So, there's the water. This looks like a pretty nice place. Got all the wood we'll need cuz you actually don't need as much wood as you think. Uh this is more than enough wood. So we're going to settle right here. So, we are going to name this beautiful place. Um. Hmm. Regalia. As in, like, regal. So, instantly right off the bat, one thing we want to start doing is getting food. So, let's look for someone who has decent body and mind. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Because we want him to have both body and mind, because... Well, you know what? He don't need to have that good of body, so but they do need to have a good mind, because eventually you can upgrade into a cook. 
which they can craft. Intelligence is good. I'll, I'll explain. Intelligent mind is good for crafting. So right here, the ability to think intelligently. A high mind. Um, pause it. Uh. So the ability to think intelligently. A high mind stat allows a hardling to excel in complex mental activities such as crafting, influences, intelligence, curiosity, and inventiveness. Body competence at physical activities. Hardlings with a high body stat will move a bit faster, attack harder, and live longer. Influences muscles. Muscle, speed, and stamina. Spirit, faith in other people. A high spirit heartling will easily befriend animals and stand strong against enemies. Influence, courage, willpower, and compassion. So basically, you, um, for a trapper, you'll want a good spirit. And there, there's just so much different things. You can group these people in different uh, groups. Uh, make them into militia and stuff um but so we, we want him and we want a carpenter so he just has to have a high mind stat is there anyone with just a high mind stat i will use you so those two and the rest will keep as workers for now so while this is paused we're going to come over here and tell them to Start chopping down trees along right here. So that way we can get our farms going. You don't have to have water with your farms, but it does help. So that should be good. So we'll go ahead and play it so uh, speed it up. Um, once we get some wood. Oh, and then we also are going to want to start getting a little bit of stone. So. Have them harvest that. Get some silkweed. Get all this stuff. Um, because we're going to want all of it eventually. We're going to set up some stockpiles. Um, I have it defaulted on none. We're going to want them to put wood, stone, clay, and not plants in there. This is just to sort your stuff so you know where it is. Um, or animal parts and plants will go in there. Uh, in here we'll have all construction goods. Uh, right here. He, This guy always comes to the beginning of the game and gives you some random stuff. So you got some, some stuff. Uh, put tools... And thread and cloth and healing items in here. Along with melee weapons, ranged weapons. Uh, pretty much all weapons and armor. And then here, we'll put food and drink. Um, and this stuff. And then finally we'll put our wealth in here. So there we go. Got all that stuff set up. Um, so they'll start moving that. Now let's get our farm started. So uh, farm. Let's put him right here. Uh, potato. Just get some of the basic foods down first. Rice. Carrot turnip just get as many things down pumpkin and that's did I get corn down gotta do this again in order to select them The turnip, pumpkin, carrot, but no corn. So, corn as well. And, um, I guess go ahead and get silkweed growing. Eventually, we'll expand these farms. But this is all we need for now. 
Um. Okay. So now, crafters, carpenter, I want you to craft one of those. And then, uh, have them. Yes, I know. Uh, I'm going to have you maintain five of those. I'm not actually going to use these. I have them maintain these. So that when traders come along, I can sell them. Windows, I use. Uh, just, I usually only use these ones right here. And the reason it's saying crafting requirements unmet is because um, he doesn't have a carpenter's workbench down. So I'm going to have him put that down in just a sec. Okay, place it right there, and he should start working on this stuff, and maintain five of those. I usually keep have him maintain a decent amount of everything, um, just five is a good, honest amount to have, so that's what I have him keep. And yeah, that's everything he can uh, craft right now. The reason I also have him do that is to level him up. Um, so he can craft new stuff. Um, so he's already got th uh, the uh, potatoes planted. And he's working on... He, it looks like he started on rice. Um, so... Uh, what to do next? What to do next? So, see, he's already achieved... Or, she's already achieved level 1. So, now I can go into here. Show workshop. She can craft a bunch of new stuff. So, um... No reason to craft that yet. We already have one of those. Maintain five of those. Um, I want you to... Um, where is it? Right here. Maintain... Five of those. I only need you to make one of those. And one of those. Okay. Maintain... I For fences, I usually keep them ta maintain ten. And... Maintain... Two gates. Wooden double door. Maintain five. This episode is literally gonna be mostly doing this as uh, Carpenter levels up. Doing a lot of this. Daily update. So, as you can see, our morale's good, our net worth, and food are not. Um, and each time you meet these requirements right here, did I get that? Yes, I did. Each time you time you meet those requirements uh, you get a new person in your town so that's awesome uh, we want to get a ton of new people in our town and look at that already level 2 which means I can craft this and I'm gonna make that go way oh dang it go way up in the list yes you can move these go ahead and place it right there Oh, saving. Um, so, I want this up high, because this is another one of his workshop items. So, put that at the very top. Can't make that. What exactly is he doing? Or she doing? Uh, go ahead and craft one of those. Uh, that This is the knight, which is the upgraded version of this. Um... I'm not going to do any more maintain orders for now. So he's crafting that. There's that silk weed right there that's bothering me. Um, so we have some food, which is good. Uh, these potatoes grow really fast, so they're already almost ready to harvest. 
um, and there is the carpenter's tool bench and we're gonna put that right next to it eventually we'll have houses and stuff for these guys um, but for now this is what we're what we have so these episodes are gonna be last probably last about 30 minutes long just because it's a really slow going game and you kind of gotta have longer episodes if you're gonna do a game like this but yeah you can look around as you can see not the entire you remember when we were choosing our are where we're settling um, it had that square around where I clicked so this is all that we have for our world right here this is our tiny little world there are some berries right there Ooh, that'd be nice to have berries are good because they always regrow after a certain amount of time there's some over there. Oh, and there's one of these. These are good because um, when you have a stonemason, you need a lot of stone. And either you mine or you harvest those. Okay. So I think something that we need to do is we need to go ahead and get um, someone as a guard. So we don't have any body six. But we do like to have a strong body but low everything else. Right here, this is the best I can do. So right here, go ahead and make a footman. And I can show you again, right here. So there's two things they can go up into. A knight, or an archer. Um, so the knights are more based around defense. So a defensive combatant focused on protecting allies from, allies from harm, and a ranged combatant unit that shoots foes with arrows. So, um, let's look at here. And we're going to go down, where's that buckler? We want him to have that buckler as soon as possible. Dang it. I hate it when that happens. It's getting on my nerves. I was about to drop it too. It is really getting on my nerves. It's a glitch that it goes about all the way back down. So close. Let's move it up slowly. So he'll be making this next, and that way our footman will have a um, of shield. Footman is a melee fighter, a good choice for backbone of your town's defense. So, pretty good. So, as you can see, now we, if we look at him, Carpenter level 3. Okay, now we can get fine uh, furniture, which is good because it sells for more and it looks a little bit better. Okay, but, um, more info. We can look at their inventory. So he's wearing a military uniform, a wooden sword, and a rough wooden buckler. So, um, this way he, uh, he has better defense. You can also, once I get the, um, oh, look, he's already started harvesting potatoes. And he's planting carrots. Oh, no, he's harvesting carrots. So look at that. And look, farmer level one. So now uh, he moves faster. So now we just have a bunch of people uh, just hanging around doing nothing. 
Um, so as you can see right here, our food's good, our morale's good, but our net worth is not. Net worth uh, is the combine. It, it, here, it'll tell you right here if I go into town info. Net worth. A reflection of the prosperity of your town. Buildings, inventory, and agriculture combine to form this score. So the more farms, more items, and more house, uh, more buildings we have, the higher our net worth. So to get that up, so we can get someone, a new person, we are going to make a new house. These are the building templates, but I like to design custom ones. So you're always going to start out with this foundation here. Um, I usually like this, uh, where is it? I like this cocoa brown uh flooring so we're gonna build it over here not too big since it's just a house 12 by 12 um and then we're going to go ahead and pop that on there we're going to oh crap gonna make it um, all the walls this nice color right here a royal to, oh okay this is uh, the basically our main quest throughout this so the honorable on win redelm it's different every time oh there is this new settlement the is this the new settlement of regalia oh it's a girl okay that's us excellent Mr. A. Burleyhan said you'd be out here but it's always a bit touch and go in the early days shall we get started started with what by order of Princess Dania first lady of the ascendancy and in those whose dimness, dimness you settle with all the blessings of the church of plenty in whose wisdom we all prosper a proclamation all submitters that attain local renown will be hereby recognized as official ascendancy townships with the rights privileges and rewards thereof Huh? What does that actually mean? Well, mostly that we write you down in a ledger somewhere in case we ever, in case we ever remember to come back and collect taxes. Uh, never mind. I'm just joking. The royal accountants have their hands full right now with the coordination and everything. Anyway, township status really means that you get a host of rewards and benefits. Indeed, the knowledge of the kingdom cannot be randomly dispersed into the wilderness to fall prey to goblins or wolves. However, by the princess's order. Eligible towns shall win access to architectural learning wealthier. Uh oh. So when I press R, it rallies them. Indeed, the knowledge of the kingdom cannot ra be randomly dispersed into the wilderness. Uh, however, by the princess. Uh, okay. Architectural, architectural learning and wealthier caravans for trade. Okay, what comes next? You may gain sufficient renown to advance to a s township in any of these three ways. Military glory, favor with the church, or the approval of the craft masters, which sounds most interesting to you. Um, uh, I like to, the easiest one is definitely the, uh, the church. But it doesn't matter what you choose here. Uh, to gain renown with the order of Sid, you must display courage and valor. I shall give your mason a recipe, quest, quest for the ingredients to craft a monument worthy of your sword arm. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. In addition to an appropriate man monument, your town will also need to have accumulated a certain level of worth. I shall leave the requirements with you, should you wish to consult with them again, or should a different path come to appeal more than your initial chosen road. Thank you. Sid's bounty be upon you, Regalia. I shall leave you a bird so you may summon me to evaluate your pro progress. So, we unlocked a bunch of stuff. Right here. Uh, right here. We unlock three things, and this is the quest. So we build this and attain a certain net worth. So Sid's Valor uh, is the one I can't really show you. I mean, I might be able to. Let me see. Ma mason Craft Menu. Do I have a Mason? Do I? I guess I do. Okay, then. Um... Or, no I don't. But, anyways, once he becomes a mason, once we get one, anyways, he'll, uh, start crafting this stuff right away. Which is good. So go ahead and put a maintain order on all these. 
I could get a mason. But anyways, what it, that stuff is talking about is this stuff. Shrine of Plenty costs 53 stone, a donation to the Church of Plenty, and three gold ingots. That is made by the cook. Okay. Valor of Sid. Goblin Honor Token. Varana Skin. And an Ogre Bone. Yeah. Guildmaster Skill. Uh, two Steel Ingots. Heavy Bandage. Decorative Vase. Wall Mounted Tapestry. And a Comfy Bed. Um, so. You basically had to get from the healer, from the potter, from the weaver, and from weaver slash carpenter. So, I mean, this one isn't that hard, but definitely the easiest is the Shrine of Plenty. You only need to have two craftsmen for that. And then you have to get a certain level of net worth. Okay, and you may be wondering, since I did that, is the thing I was building gone? No, I just come over here, and I click on it. Okay, so column material. I can change the color of the columns, but I don't think I'm going to. I'll just keep them like that. Okay, next up is a door. So, let's see. How many blocks across is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that means to center it, daily update. See, our net worth went up because we have more stuff, but still, nope. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. So there we go. Double wooden door. And then we can. We can also make two story buildings, but uh, it's kind of hard. And it's kind of glitchy at the moment, so we're not going to. Um, and then we're going to change this around. And there we go. We got our roof. And yeah. That's pretty much all it takes to build a house. You can also put furniture in, but I know for a fact now you shouldn't do that until after it's done. So we're gonna finish editing and build. Oh, not yet. We're going to name it. This is our carpenter house. So there we go. Yes, start building. And then as you look over here, these people are running over and they're gonna start digging out the ground for the foundation. So let's see, what did you unlock, Sarah? Um, the only thing that we don't have unlocked in the carpenter now is the recurve bow, which is an upgrade to the archer, not the actual archer, because that's right there. Archer's bow um, is a shepherd's crook. Oh, and this. These I want really badly. Because that way we'll always have traders around. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to put a maintain order on that. Uh oh. Wood guys. Here goes our footman. So as you can see our footman's actually really good at just being a level zero. That is a lot ju for just being day four. But yeah, as you can see, he is destroying them. Something that we do need to get soon so we can heal him as an herbalist staff. Because the only way you can heal these guys are through using an herbalist staff. There we go. And then people that are come will come over and loot that stuff. But there you go. We are They already have the foundation built. Okay, let's see. Well, uh, it's our episode's already been going a little bit longer than it should have. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like down below. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions um, for this game, for the channel, what games you want me to play, uh, any personal questions you guys want to ask, put it in the comments down below. And I just want to say, 
Thank you, everyone, and goodbye.